Hey folks, uh, Wade here from the Shoemakers Academy. So today we're going to talk about vulcanized shoes. And, and what are vulcanized shoes? Well, vulcanized shoes are how classic Vans and Converse, uh, a lot of those vintage skate shoes, CVOs, Sperry's, uh, Jack Purcell's, those are all made by a vulcanizing process. And it's it's very different from how a modern, uh, modern running shoe or, or a basketball shoe is made. Uh, and we're going to show you through that process. So what we have today is actually a video that... Um, that uh, that I received from the factory. I was touring them, uh, touring in China. I'm always looking for new capabilities for customers, and of course, my, for myself. And uh, we, uh, a friend of mine, introduced me to this factory. Went over, take a look, and uh, walk through their process. And they have a nice promo video they made that you can also see on on YouTube. But what I've done is I've added some photos that that I took from from that factory and some other videos that I took. And uh, I just want to walk you through the vulcanizing process and um, and show you the capabilities. If you're if you're looking for a for a factory like this, um, just you know shoot me an email at uh, the shoe dog at shoemakers academy, and uh, we can introduce you. But let's let's get started. Okay, so first thing is the vulcanizing process. So uh, I'm just going to show you this drawing. This is from our book, How Shoes Are Made, and I'll show you where where to find that uh, at the end of the video. But basically, your upper is made in the normal process, just stitched together. And you do your lasting process, whether it's board lasting or strobel lasting. But instead of instead of having the outsole unit be one solid piece of rubber that's already made, you assemble the outsole component piece by piece onto the upper. So what does that mean? Well, it means that you, you add a bottom and then you add a sidewall, right? Instead of gluing that together in one piece, you attach them piece by piece. And uh, as we get into the video, I'll show you. But what that allows you to do is have some other special, uh, some special geometry that you couldn't make with a with a regular uh, with a regular cold cement shoe. So let's let's I'll show you a couple of shoes that they make. So here, you can see here's a regular canvas upper. And now the first thing the first thing you got to remember too about vulcanized shoes is that uh, because the entire shoe actually well, why do we call it vulcanized? Right. The reason we call it vulcanized is because these rubber pieces that are that are attached to the shoe, uh, they're in pieces, right? So this toe cap is different from the from the foxing tape. So what happens is, in order to get those to fuse together, you have to vulcanize the shoe, which just means cook, right? But if you look at this shoe right here, you'll see that that it's all um, leather or canvas, right, or uh, uh, cotton fabric. That's because the entire shoe has to go into a vulcanizing oven, and we'll show you that. And and the entire shoe has to get because you're just trying to you got to cook the rubber together but it's almost 200 c right so you're cooking the shoe and if it had plastic like this shoe in the back right over here right if it if that went into the oven the airbag would explode and the plastic would melt so if you look at these these vulcanized shoes and converse and vans and, and this brand here you'll see that it's all uh fibers that can withstand that high temperature so let's let's look at that so so here's some other cool geometry. So this is sort of an espadrille style, right? Where this this um, um, hemp uh, weave is, is actually sewn onto the upper and then they put vulcanizing tape. I'll, I'll show you some pictures of that. But here, here's a great example of what you can do with a vulcanized shoe. You can see how this big rubber panel laps up onto the upper and that's because it's a separate piece that screws on like this. And and you'll see sort of how they make the, so the converse toe cap is made using exactly the same process. Okay. Uh, here's another here's another example. Okay, so first things first, um, you got to make the rubber component. So the upper the uppers are being made, you know, in one side of the factory. The rubber componentry is being made in another. So first thing is you have this big mixing press where they mix together the the raw materials, and and also they could bring in. So this is what natural rubber uh, looks like. This brown stuff over here, uh, that's what natural rubber looks like. And this could this could be synthetic gum rubber. Um, you can see by the clarity of it is why it, it would tell me it's synthetic, but this is what sort of natural gum rubber it looks like. Not that nice looking, but that's what it is. Okay. So those pieces are are mixed together and rolled into sheets. So here's here's the mixing mill. And you'll see these are giant steel rollers, and that's what, what combines the combines the materials together. Um, and here's a guy that's that's running the roller and he feeds, he rolls it off, rolls it back in. Uh, here we're cutting, die cutting the the bottom components together. Or die cutting, die cutting the bottom components. So they've already sort of rolled out that sheet, and now they're they're cutting it to make the shoe bottoms. Okay, so this is 
what we'd call foxing tape. And this is the strip of rubber that's wrapped around the side of the shoe. So the next step is how do you, how do you make this rubber tape, right? Well, let's, let's see the process. So um, here's the rubber tape. Now this is an extrusion ma machine. So you can see the mixed rubber is fed in to the top here and out comes this little strip. And you can see this machine has two different extruders on it, right? Uh, one of these actually has the black. You can see the black over here, right? Uh, so here is the tape coming out. You can see it's it's actually um, it's instantly um, cool. It's instantly um, uh, gets a water bath, right? So that it can firm up a little bit. Because this is still this. If you just grab this with your hand, you could just pull it apart. Because it's really it's not vulcanized. And vulcanizing just means the molecules are still loose. They're 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 together, but they're not fused, right? So vulcanizing is the process where where the, the where the molecular bonds cross link to each other and that's what makes rubber tough and durable so it's just a cooking process but cooking process in the presence of some catalyst like sulfur for example okay uh so here they're they're making some tape and uh they get a water bath to firm it up and here's the extrusion machine right and they're extruding a big ribbon and here's another machine that's that's spewing out little black strips and i'll show you what that's for Right, because here now those black strips are getting attached to the to the ribbon. Now you have a white tape with a with a black stripe. So you think that that's not actually painted? It literally is on the rubber. And sometimes you can actually grab that thing and, and peel it off, right? But it's because it's it's not painted. It's actually it's actually rubber. So okay, here's what a stack of foxing tape looks like. Um, and because if you're going to make a few thousand pairs a day right this is what that looks like because you need two two pieces of tape to make to make one pair of shoes uh and a, one assembly line could make maybe 1500 or 2000 pairs a day and if that factory has four or five assembly lines now you're talking 10 or 15000 pairs a day so you have it's a, it, you know for a big factory it's it takes a lot of a lot of people and a lot of material to to get this stuff ready okay so the, the, this guy um, is making the little heel logos, right? So this is a little rubber press, and um, he actually puts the, the the he puts the black rubber in and scrapes it down, and then puts a rubber a red rubber sheet on it, and that was what makes the little heel logo, right? Uh, yeah, it looks <laughs> looks kind of kind of messy, uh, kind of messy. I mean, this this work when I saw this workstation, I was like, you you've got to be kidding me! But uh, you know, it's just a simple sing, single single press for rubber pressing. It, you know, there you go. It's, it's kind of goofy. Um, so that's how they make the little license plate logo. So here's the guy yeah, using the mixing mill, feeding the rubber into the extruder, and here's the tape coming off, and it's got an automatic cutter to cut it to length, uh, and they're stacking it, and here, now we're preparing the upper, right? So we're now using a, a cutting press. Uh, they're doing a little computer stitch, some embroidery for logo stuff. Uh, here's a screen printing process. So this is happening on the other side of the factory where the rubber is in one room because that's really dirty. Now here we are on the upper side of the factory doing the the logo creation and the sewing. Okay, now this this is the this is the bottom, right? So when you look at a converse, right, you have the rubber tape, right, and then you have the the rubber on the bottom. So that rubber bottom is made in a separate pressing operation. And here, what the worker is doing is he's buffing it to rough up the surface, so that when you have that bottom bottom cap or bottom base, and then you glue the you glue the the, the foxing tape onto the side that it, it sticks really well so that's what he's doing here he's roughing that okay now they're uh they're just preparing some upper components so what that worker is doing is actually just marking the upper so that they know where to put an overlay or where to punch the holes etc okay so here here now this is for vulcanizing this is pretty important you see this is the the heel counter that is over here and this actually is another piece of rubber because you can't take regular plastic and put that into the vulcanizing oven. So they'll use usually scrap or recycled rubber from the other manufacturing process. They'll make a sheet of that and use that to make the heel counter or the toe counter of the shoe. Because again, it has to be rubber that can withstand the heat of the vulcanizing process. Okay. Uh, now let's get those uppers all stitched together with uh, either canvas or leather, whatever they're doing. Okay, so this is the strobel machine. And this is basically putting the bottom 
onto the upper part of the shoe, right? The fabric bottom. So when you when you open up a shoe and you see a little zigzag stitch around the edge, that's what this stitch is. And then this is what, again, holds the upper to sort of the bottom fabric of the shoe, which lets you do the lasting operation. Pretty fast. Okay, uh, punching some eyelets. Okay, so this is this is the finished upper. Now this is a sort of espadrille style, right? It's a canvas upper. They've sewn that little hemp or, uh, or twine um, strip onto the edge. And then this this white thing here, this is called the lasting apron. And when they go to, to last the shoe, that's what the machine grabs onto and tucks it under. Because this, this line here on the bottom here, this is where that upper turns the corner around the last. So that's, that's a lasting apron. Okay, now they're putting a little glue on the lasting apron. And here is the, the lasting operation. So here's the machine. And uh, it's got, it's got uh, they call them knives, but basically it grabs the edge of the upper. And then the worker has either a foot, a foot pedal or a little side controller. And this is what physically takes that upper and pulls it around onto the lasting board to, to, secure, the, uh, to secure the shoe. Let's watch that. All right, so it's grabbing and then he activates. And then it automatically that knife smooths it down and glues it all simultaneously. So now it's stuck down, stuck down tight. Now the next worker, he's going to finish the lasting process. And what he has in his hand there is a pair of beak lasting pliers. You can see he's using the beak to grab. And then you see it's got a little hammer on it and he's just going to hammer it down. And, and this lasting board here has a little glue on it. So it's a little sticky already. And the upper we saw has a little contact cement. So once he hammers it down, it essentially stays put. So let's watch him do this. So he, this is what he's lasting the waist of the shoe. Okay, and now it's going to go to the heel laster, which it basically does the same operation just on the on the back of the shoe. You can see this this blade here. It's not really a blade, but that's what they call it. It's basically, is taking that upper, pressing it. The upper is being pressed, pushed up from the bottom, and this thing smoothing it and mashing it so that it gets a good bond and. A, Basically, you can see the shoes in the back now. They've already been all heel last. And now you'll notice that the last here is aluminum, not plastic. And that's because you can't take a plastic glass and put it into a vulcanizing oven. It, it will melt. Important. Pro tip. All right, so that's the last. Okay, so we're uh, we're doing our eyelets again here. And uh, this is another model that it's going through the lasting operation. So here they see the big shoehorn and that's how they're getting it on here applying the glue now you'll see here where you'll see the strobel is already attached to the lining in the back of the shoe and and then what they've just left is the lasting apron at the toe right because this one all just needs toe pressure right it doesn't need to to have waist lasting or the heel lasting they're just doing the toe slightly different process for this for this model okay so get that glue on there And then they take it to the to the lasting machine. And there it goes. Okay. All right. Uh, next, putting the laces in. And they're also, they're going to put a little uh, scrap piece of lasting board in there. And that's just to protect the tongue of the shoe so it doesn't get damaged whilst they're doing these operations. So you can see this aluminum last is kind of hammered. Not, not the best. Okay. So they're doing a little uh, heel lasting process. And this is just to make sure that the upper is really flat and tight down to the last, just to make sure that everything is sucked down to get as much pressure to make sure that the shoe has the right shape. But also when you go to glue the outsole on, if the upper is loose, then it's not gonna fit right. So but they're taking a little extra effort there and just fixing the corner. Again, with those same, you know, beak pliers. Okay, uh, what the worker is doing there is just grinding off a little extra. So after the lasting process, there might be some bumps or lumps where most of that material is taken up during the lasting process. So this is where they're going to buff that down to make it flat. So when you go to glue the bottom on, you don't have big bumps or lumps. Okay, so now we are back to the gluing process. Now, yeah, there's nothing more sophisticated than a, than a toothbrush, right? Now... When you do the cementing for these, you're going to do a couple of different processes. You're going to do priming and you're going to do cement. Um, and then you're going to, here's the worker now. They've, they've applied, you saw how they applied cement 
to the bottom of the shoe and they also apply cement to the bottom of the rubber piece right you, it, this is contact cement so you actually have to have glue on both sides of the bond right that way you know that the glue is saturated on both sides and the glue is tacky at this point it's not liquid anymore and then you push it together and then you, you do the pressing operation okay so here uh they're putting the uh fitting the rubber piece on and there's a little piece of lasting board in there to keep the bottom of the shoe a little stiffer but you can see how the rubber just comes up to the edge of of that of that uh, hemp rand there and then just press it okay now they're going to put a little foxing tape around that so they're just adding a little glue to cover the edge right again same thing just a toothbrush nothing fancy all right, so here the worker is applying the bottom. Now, this is more of a capsule unit, right? And this is still, you know, it doesn't wrap up very, very far because you're still going to put tape around it. But it's a, it's a little different from the, from the hemp one. And now the same thing. They're just applying a little primer, a little glue. Now, you're going to see the worker. Okay, that tool. Let me back up a second here. This is an interesting little tool that the, 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 the gal has. You can see this little bump right here, right? And what that is, is it's just, it's a little sort of spacer so that when she lets that ride on the edge of the outsole, um, it doesn't, it, the glue line doesn't get too far up, right? So that's how they control the height of the glue, just gliding around the edge of the outsole. Yeah, interesting. Okay, so more glue. Because you see, why are they doing this? It, you have to have multiple coats, right? Put on a coat, it goes through the conveyor oven, it dries, and you add another coat. And you're also coating the rubber foxing tape with another layer of glue too, at least two. You want to make sure that it's fully covered with glue, right? Okay, so now we're applying the foxing tape. And you to notice that because the shoe is dry, so she can still handle it without getting wet glue everywhere. So you'll see she lays the tape on and then she cuts off the extra edge. Again, this is unvulcanized, so it's like tangy taffy, right? So you can just you could just tear it with your hand, but they just cut it with the pair of scissors so easy, okay? That's it, and press it into place. Okay, now this gal is marking where the toe cap goes. You see how soft the rubber is? She just marked it with her fingernail, that's it. Now, this gal, again, is applying a little glue because extra, every layer needs glue in the middle, right? So here she's got tape again. All right, now this is, um, this is more of a converse style, right? So um, I wanted to show you this. So they've, they've put, the upper is lasted, and you can see they've put glue on the on the toe cap here and now they're going to come with a, a piece of rubber and they're going to stretch it on there by hand right and then you get in the, and there then you just trim off the extra that's that's basically how it's done so and then they apply the tape on over it so again here's them locating the foxing tape uh and then trimming it and rolling it on and then you do same thing you do the pressing operation once you get the foxing once you get the tape on Okay, what's all this hydraulic pressing? Well, this is just to make sure that everything is down together tight. Now, this is a little extra glue operation. Not every factory does this. This is a nice touch, but basically it just it just lets you get a little bead of glue around the top edge of the outsole unit. Um, when you buy the shoe, sometimes you'll see that little line of glue. That's just kind of how it's done. It just makes sure that there's no edge that gets loose, right? Uh, okay, so. And when you wrap that tape around by hand, it's not always 100% aligned up to the bottom. But again, this rubber hasn't been vulcanized, so it's still really soft. So what, is the, what does the guy have here? He has a little hot knife, and he can just glide around and, and trim off the extra. So let's watch him do that. Yeah, it just makes it nice and straight. Okay, so same, same operation here. Uh, here's another factory where they're, they're cutting the tape and gluing it on. Now, this is an interesting... When I first saw this, I was like, okay, you know, it, it's a little bit easier sometimes to handle rather than have a knife with a big long handle on it. It's just this hot knife mounted to the bench and the worker just glides the shoe past the, past the knife to, uh, to make the, to make the cut. Interesting. Okay. So this is a little pressure roller and that's just to make sure that the tape is pushed down in full contact with the upper. There's no air bubbles or any wrinkles or anything like that. Because once once you get this thing into the vulcanizing oven, you if you there's a wrinkle or a bubble or whatever, it it'll be in there permanently. So, okay, 
So you can see now they're loading. Okay, the shoot, it, it looks like it's done, but it's not done because yes, all the pieces are glued together, but the rubber pieces need to be vulcanized. So now they're putting the entire shoe, right, into this rack, and this rack is gonna go into is gonna go into the vulcanizing oven. So that's what it, that's what the oven looks like, and you'll notice it's got a gigantic door. And it's got this big gear because this it's under it's under pressure, right? Because you want to really juice up the heat because it's going to be almost 200 C uh, for a couple hours to get this to get this set. And you don't want that thing opening by accident. So there's the you can see the pipes in there that run the steam, um, and they're just going to push the whole rack in there and and get it cooking. And yeah, in the summertime, this area of the factory gets really hot. Um, so here, let me see quickly. I think I'll pull this over here. Um, no, I'm looking over here. Yeah, it's a. Um, I have a photo off screen here of the um, of the, uh, the 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 setting of the machine, and it's one seven. It's one seventy C. Okay, let's get back to this. So you're gonna close it and the whole shoe gets cooked. Now, like you see the whole shoe gets in there, right? So that tells you that you can't use any plastic pieces. That's why when you look at these traditional vulcanized shoes, you see leather, canvas, suede. There's some, some heat resistant vinyl out there, but you won't see any plastic parts or rubberized logos. Or I mean, if it's rubberized logo, it's real rubber. It's not like the PVC you know, micro injection badges or any of that fancy sort of modern stuff, right? Shiny PVC or man-made material. You won't see any of that because that it all just cooks. So once you um, once the shoe comes out of the oven, you're gonna delast it, and it, you see why those lasts are kind of broken up. Because what's that guy doing? He's delasting it and he's throwing the last in the bin. So not not ideal because that's just they're gonna get broken. Okay, now they're gonna do some quality checks. Make sure everything's clean. Okay, so here's the thing. The footbeds go in after. Why is that? Well, because these footbeds are EVA. If you put that EVA footbed into the oven, it would get destroyed. So get those footbeds in there. Wrap up the stuffing paper. Again, this is where you do your, your quality control process. Make sure you've got pairs. Get those temporary laces out and get the real laces in. Uh, you know, quick clean up with a rubber eraser or, uh, you know, if there's a little you know, uh, temporary mark from the, from the upper marking. They'll use a little acetone or ketone or something like that to, to clean it up. Um, okay. What's that? So that is actually like a, an industrial blow dryer. And what this thing does is if there's any loose thread, it just, it just melts it off. So there, they just going by and looking for any loose threads. I mean, loose threads theoretically should be caught during the uh, during the inspection process, but whatever, it's always something happened there. Okay, a little cleanup here. There's a pencil mark or a pen mark or something got dirty. I mean, this factory, if you look, these conveyor belts look pretty clean. So there's not going to be much going wrong. And, and you, you, for this kind of shoe and this nice white sidewall, yeah, it's got to be clean. Otherwise, it's going to be back. So what's she doing? She's checking the size. She's making sure she's got a pair. Now she's putting the tags on. And there you have the box end label. Now she knows. She checked the shoe size. She checked both shoes, she checked the label, and here's the inspector putting the tape in and you're okay. So that, that's the process. So uh, thank you for, for watching. I've got a couple more things to tell you, but if you wanna learn more about this kind of process, come on over to, to our website. It's called Shoemakers Academy. And uh, you know we have tons of courses where we talk about exactly this stuff like vulcanize and cold cement. And uh, a lot of the pictures and the techniques um, that we just that you just saw in the video are covered here in this book called how shoes are made and there's a big section that explains the difference between cold cement which is what like a nike running shoe or air max or whatever is made out of or air jordan versus vulcanized which we just saw right and uh, when you get to that book you can see um, there's a lot of uh, more detailed information about the process right you can see this right and then um, also Here's the machinery. It's, it goes through step by step. Okay, so yeah, if you're if you're running the extrusion machine, the shape of your tape, the width, the thickness is all determined determined by the die. So here's a die, and here's some more information about that process. Again, this is all in the book. How shoes are made. 
uh, in the finishing process. Okay, so yeah, where's that book? If you come to uh, Shoemakers Academy, go here to Books and Tools, and you're going to see all the other books we have, How Shoes Are Made, How to Start Your Own Shoe Company, Pattern Design, Shoe Material Design Guide. Those are all, those are all here. Um, and, uh, and, and also we have a lot of courses, right? So if you want to, if you like this video and you want to see more and you want to learn about more processes of how shoes are made, then check out Shoemakers Academy, come over and check out our online courses. There's a, there's a ton of great stuff there and, uh, you'll, you'll literally learn a lot about shoemaking. Hey, if you, if you like this video, um, please, uh, subscribe, give it a thumbs up. Uh, check out the links uh, in the bio below, and uh, we really appreciate you uh, you you uh, enjoying this and checking it out and learning. And uh, yeah, just come by, visit Shoemakers Academy. There's a lot of great stuff there. Thanks.